of Christ. Huh. Oh, God, it is hot today. Uh, <sighs> hey, are you thirsty? Let's order some. <clears throat> Two seltzers. No seltzer. Oh. <laughs> oh. Well, do you have beer? No, it gets delivered later tonight. Well, then what do you have? We call soda. But it's <laughs> uh, Well, let's have it. Let's have it. I thought I saw the... Egyptian Osiris, or uh, the Phoenician god Tammuz, or the lesser known and terrible Huizlilopochtli of the Aztecs. German. English. For instance, Ivan, you portray the birth of Jesus, son of God, very well and satirically. But the point is, neither Jesus nor these other sons of God were ever born. So instead of focusing on his birth, you should portray the absurd rumors of his coming, right? Excuse me, please. Uh, 
may I allow myself, not being of your acquaintance, but uh, um, well, the subject of your educated conversation is so very interesting to me. Eh? <laughs> Maybe French, Polish? Uh, may I say? Uh, Jesus never existed. No, nope, you did not hear wrong. That is precisely what I was saying. Oh, how interesting. What the devil does he want? And you are in agreement with your friend. 100%. Ah, ah. <laughs> uh, amazing. <laughs> well, forgive me, um, but uh, along with everything else, would this also mean that you do not believe that uh, God? Um, I won't tell anyone, I promise. <laughs> no, we do not believe in God, and we're free to say so. Oh, you are... Uh, uh, yes, we are atheists. <laughs> what is with this foreign goose? <laughs> How lovely. <laughs> okay, you, you see, in our country, atheism doesn't surprise anyone. The majority of our population stopped believing in fairy tales about God long ago, quite purposely. Oh, well, thank you. Uh, allow me to thank you with all of my heart. <laughs> Why? Oh, this is vital information, of, of great importance to me as a traveler. <laughs> Definitely not English, but where on earth did he learn Russian? But uh, if I may ask, uh, if uh, one of the proofs of God's existence, uh, which it is known, there are five. Ah, well, why don't you see, these proofs aren't worth anything. Ah. Humanity put them on the shelf long ago. In the realm of logic and reason, there can be no proof for the existence of God. Ah, <laughs> bravo, bravo, perfect Kantian response, eh? <laughs> but alas, Kant destroys all five proofs, but in so doing, almost in self-mockery, produces a sixth of his own creation. Okay, well, you see, Kant's proof is equally unconvincing. Yes! Kant should be sent to three years in Solid Key for his proofs. <laughs> the Solid Key for the camp. Precisely. I, 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 no, precisely. You know, I, I told him as much myself at breakfast. Uh -huh. <laughs> My dear professor, it doesn't end up, does it? You know, clever, but unclear. <laughs> they are going to laugh at you. Breakfast was Kant. Ah, but uh, unfortunately, he cannot be put into... Solovsky, Solo simply because he has spent the last hundred years in a considerably more remote place, and it is simply impossible to extract him from there. <laughs> too bad. <laughs> yeah, too bad. <laughs> too bad. <laughs> but uh, I must ask you, if, if there is no God, then uh, who controls the lives of men and, and, and the order of the world in general? Well, each person controls their own life. Ah, yes, but... In order to control, one must need to have a plan, a, a certain plan, for some decent length of time. I mean, say a measly thousand years, huh? But man cannot even control his own tomorrow. No, no. Imagine you begin to control, to manage others and yourself, and, and you get a certain knack for it, but then you get oh, lung cancer, huh? Well, suddenly you don't care for the lives of others, you care only for your own. And, and your family starts to lie to you, and, and, and you... You rush off to, uh, uh, to medical professionals, to quacks, to fortune tellers, all of them equally stupid, you know, and outside of your control. Oh, then, what a tragedy. Man who until recently thought himself to be in control of something is now dead in a box, burned in an oven. Oh, and sometimes it's even worse than that. <laughs> Say a man wishes to move to Kislovodsk for some reason. Well, even this he cannot do because Whoops, is he slips and falls under a tram car. How do I ah! him up? Are you telling me this man is in control of his own life? Is it not more correct to say that someone else is controlling him entirely? <laughs> you would like a smoke? Ah, uh, <laughs> yes, thank you. <laughs> what kind? Our brand. Ah. Soviet cigarettes of the highest quality. Ah, uh -huh. here's how I'll counter. Yes, man is mortal. Nobody yes, man is mortal, but that's only half the problem. The trouble is that sometimes man is unexpectedly mortal, and there's the rub. And in general, man cannot even say what he is doing with his own either. Okay. <laughs> well, all right, that, you see, right there. That's an exaggeration. I, for one, will stop by my house at Segovia Street, and then I've got to share the mass lit meeting at Gradiatus at 10. Although, I suppose, if I'm walking down the street, and a brick should just, like, fall right <laughs> on the <head>. No, <laughs> no, 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 no. No brick will ever fall out of the sky like that. On this, I can assure you, you are in danger of no brick. No, not at all. You will die a different death. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, so I suppose you even know what kind of death. Well, of course. One, two, mercury in an open house, moon gone, six, destruction, seven, Head will be cut off. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, by whom exactly? Uh, enemies of the revolution, uh, foreign intervention.
indigenous. No, no. By a Russian woman. A Kosovo girl. Okay, excuse me. I, I didn't find that very unlikely. Oh, okay. well, excuse me, but the Anushka has already bought the sunflower oil. Not only has she bought it, but she has spilled it as well, so there will be no meeting. Yeah, uh, pardon me, but what does sunflower oil have to do with it? Who is Anushka? Oh, I think I know. Um, have you ever been, citizen, in a hospital for the mentally ill? <laughs> <laughs> I have, yes, I have. <laughs> oh, where haven't I been? But unfortunately, I did not get to ask them what is schizophrenia. You will have to ask them yourself, Ivan Nikolaevich. How do you know my name? Oh, come now, who does not know the name of Ivan Nikolaevich? Excuse me, could you give us a moment? I want to say a few words to my friend in private. Of course, of course. It is very nice under these trees, and uh, I'm in no hurry whatsoever. OK. <laughs> Listen, Misha, he's not a tourist. He's, he's obviously a spy. He's an emigre who crossed back over. Let's ask him for his papers before he gets away. Thanks, man. Oh, believe me. He's pretending to be a, a fool or a madman to get us to talk. Listen to how good his Russian is. Let's detain him before he escapes. Excuse me, I'm so sorry, but in our conversation, I forgot to introduce myself. Here is my card and my passport and the letter inviting me here to Moscow as a consultant. Ah. Okay, well, thank you, Professor my Wood. Pleasure. Now, uh, uh, you've been invited here as a consultant. Professor. As a consultant, yes. And you're German? Perhaps I am. Okay, well, your Russian is very good. Oh, well, I am a bit of a polyglot. I speak a great many languages. Uh, what is your field? I am an expert in black magic. Ah. And you've been invited here in that capacity? In that capacity, yes. It appears that in the state library here, there is a certain manuscript of a 10th century necromancer, and it is necessary for me to uh, sort it out. <laughs> I am the only expert in black magic in the world. Ah. Okay, so you're a historian. <laughs> yes, a historian. <laughs> uh, there will be quite a story at the ponds today, but know this. Jesus did exist. Okay, well, Professor, we do respect your uh, education, but on this point, we've got a different point of view. Oh, there is no need for a point of view. He simply existed. Yeah, okay, but there's no proof, and we need proof. Ah, but we do not, you see, for in a white cloak with a blood red lining, in the shuffling gate of a cattle. Early in the morning of the 14th day of the spring month of Nisan, the procurator of Judea, Pontius Pilate, emerged onto the column. Oh, 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 my head. Oh, gods. Gods, why do you punish me? No doubt it's this terrible illness. Oh, this again, this invincible, terrible illness. And the crania, no remedy, Ugh. no escape. If I can just not move my head. <gasps> poison, give me poison. Accused from Galilee. Was the case sent to the Tetrarch? Yes, Procurator. And? He refused to make a decision and sent the Sanhedrin's death sentence to you for confirmation. Bring in the accused. Speaking Aramaic. So, you're the one who incited the people to destroy the temple of Yerushalayim, hmm? Good sir, believe me. Good sir, you mean me? You are mistaken. The whispered rumors of me and Yerushalayim report that I am a terrible monster. And they're true. Bring in Rat Slayer, the Centurion. The criminal calls me good sir. Pray you, correct him. Dumb. Yours. Yeshua. Hanotri. 
Where do you come from? Gamala, it's a town. I know it, residence. I have no residence, I move from town to town. You can say vagrant. Any family? None, I am alone in the world. Can you read and write? Yes. Know any languages besides Aramaic? Greek. Speaking in Greek. And you said you are going to destroy the temple and called upon the people to do so. No, sir, I... Ow! No, Hegemon. Never in my life was I going to destroy the temple building, nor did I incite anyone to such a stupid act. So, you are a liar. It is clearly written, incited to destroy the temple, <laughs> and people have testified to it. These good people, Hegemon, have no education and they've mixed up everything I've said. I'm actually starting to worry that this confusion will continue for a very long time. Uh, and all because he isn't writing down what I say correctly. See? Do not pretend to be mad. I will not ask you again. There isn't much on your record, but I assure you it is enough to hang you. No, no, Hegemon, there's a man who follows me and is writing all the time on this goatskin parchment. I peeked at it once and was horrified. I've said nothing that he's written there. I asked him to burn the parchment for God's sake, but he tore it from me and ran away. Who is this man? Matthew Levi. He was a tax collector. I first met him on the road to Bethphage, where the fig tree grove juts out, and we got to talking. At first, he treated me hostily and even insulted me. At least, I think he insulted me by calling me dog. I like dogs and don't think I ought to be offended. But after he listened to me, he began to change. He threw away his money on the road and said he'd follow me. Yerushalayim, what does one not hear in it? A tax collector throwing away money. Yes, he <laughs> said that money had become hateful to him and since then he's been my companion. He could be gone in seconds. Hang him and it's back to my room, my bed, cold water. <laughs> my binga, good doggy. Feel my poor head. Oh, poison. Oh. <clears throat> huh? Uh, Matthew Levi. Yes, Matthew Levi. So then what was it you said about the temple? Hmm? To the crowd at the bazaar? I said, Hegemon, that the temple of the old faith would fall and a new temple of truth would be built. I said it like that to make it easier to understand. Why did you, vagrant, confuse the crowd, speaking to them of truth of which you know nothing? Oh, what is the truth? The truth? The truth is you have a headache. It aches so badly you're having faint-hearted thoughts of suicide. You're almost unable to speak to me, and it's hard for you to even look at me. And I'm now your unwilling torturer, which upsets me. You can't even think about anything. You only wish that your dog would come. The one thing in life that you're attached to but your suffering will end soon, and your headache will go away. <coughs> you see? It's over now. I'm very glad of it, too. My advice, Hegemon, would be to take a walk. Leave the palace a while, take a stroll somewhere nearby, say the Mount of Olives. <laughs> There's a storm coming. It'd do you much good, and I'd be happy to accompany you. I've had some new thoughts I'd like to share with you, also to prove to you that I'm actually a very intelligent person. Your problem is you're closed off. You've lost faith in people. You must agree you can't give all your love to just one dog. It's your life, Hegemon. Your life is empty. <laughs> Unbind him. Admit it. You are a great physician. Uh, no, I'm not a physician. I didn't ask before. Do you speak Latin? Yes. Speaking in pilot's native Latin. How did you know I wanted my dog? You moved your hand in the air like you wanted to peck him. Not a physician, you say? No, believe me, Hegemon, not a physician. Fine, keep your 
your secrets, they'll hardly help you anyway. You maintain that you did not incite anyone to destroy, set fire to, or damage in any way the temple. I repeat, I did not incite anyone to such acts. Do I look like an idiot? No. No, you do not look like an idiot. Are you acquainted with any of the following men? A certain Dismas, another named Jestas, and a third by the name Barabbas. I do not know these good people. <coughs> Truly. Why do you call everyone good people? Because they are. All of them. Good people. There are no evil people in the world. <laughs> That's the first I've heard of it, but perhaps I know too little. And you preach this. Yes. But take, for instance, the centurion, Mark, called Rat Slayer. Is he a good person? Yes, he is an unhappy man, and since the good people disfigured him, he's become cruel and hard. I'd be curious to know who injured him. I can tell you that. I was there. The good people fell upon him like dogs on a bear. If I could speak with him, I could change him very quickly. He's mad. The temple incident is unrelated. There is no crime, no death sentence. Exile and imprisonment in Caesarea along the coast. You're my summer residence. <laughs> Speaking Aramaic? Is that all on him? No, oh, unfortunately, no. Listen, Hon Notes Read, did you ever say anything about the great Caesar? Answer me yes or no. It is easy and pleasant to tell the truth. I don't care if it's pleasant or not, you will tell me now, but weigh every word unless you want a certain and painful death. Tell me this then. Do you know a certain Judas of Kiriath? And what did you say to him if you said anything? This is what happened. The evening before last, near the temple, I met with a young man calling himself Judas of Kiriath. He invited me to his place for some Is dinner. he a good man? A good and inquisitive man. He was very interested in what I had to say and received me cordially and asked me to give my opinions on state power. Of this, he was particularly interested. And what did you say, or are you going to say you've forgotten? Among other things, I said that all power is violence over people, and a time will come when there will be no power of the Caesars or any other power. Man will pass into the kingdom of truth and justice, where there will no longer be any need for power at all. Go on. That's all. At that point, men ran in and bound me and took me to prison. There has never been and never will be any power in this world greater or better for the people than that of Emperor Tiberius. And it is not your place, mad criminal, that you are to think otherwise. I see there's been some misinformation that's come about since I spoke with that young man from Kyria. I'm beginning to worry he may come to grief. I'm very sorry for him. I think there is someone else you should feel more sorry for than Judas of Caria, and who will have it far worse than he. So then, Mark Ratslayer, a cold and efficient torturer, the people who beat you for your preachings, the robbers Dismas and Justos, who themselves confessed to killing four soldiers and this dirty traitor Judas, they are all, as you say, good people. Yes. And the kingdom of truth will come. It will, Hegemon! It will never come! Yeshua! Hano Tsri, do you believe in the gods? I believe in one god. Then pray to him, pray hard, though it won't help. Why don't you let me go, Hegemon? I see they want to kill me. Do you suppose that the Roman procurator will let a man go for saying what you've said? God! that I'm going to take your place. I don't share your convictions. Listen to me. If from this moment you say one word, speak to anybody at all, beware of me. I repeat, Hegemon. Silence! To me. <laughs> take him to the captain of my secret service. Keep him separate from the other prisoners. Not a soul is to speak to him or answer any of his questions. <laughs> God's my head.
was about 10 o'clock in the morning, Ivan Nikolaevich. Your story is extremely interesting, Professor, and somewhat familiar, although it doesn't really coincide with the Gospels. Oh, have mercy. You of all people should know that absolutely nothing written in the Gospels ever took place. True. <laughs> but then nobody can confirm anything in your story took place either, so. Ah, but they can, you see, because uh, I was there. But in secret, incognito, as they say, and so I must ask you, don't tell anyone. Shh, shh, shh. <laughs> now, how long have you been in Moscow? Oh, just this moment. And where are you staying? At the Metropole? The Hotel for Foreigners! Where? Uh, nowhere. But uh, where are you going to live? Oh, in your apartments on Sadovia. Huh. <laughs> right. No, I, I would like that. But unfortunately, my flatmate, Stevie Likadeev, is just uh, not so keen on guests. But uh, I do recommend the Metropole. It's a first class hotel. It's true. <laughs> so is there no devil as well? No devil. Don't contradict. Okay, there's no devil. This is ridiculous. Stop acting like you're psychotic. <laughs> this is interesting. Mm. What is it with you? Everything you ask for, there's nothing there. So there simply isn't one. Oh, right. Don't, don't get excited, Professor. Calm down. Just have a seat here with uh, with Comrade Homeless. Oh. And um, I'm going to run and make a quick phone call to uh, Stevie and then... When I come back, we can show you around Moscow. I, I know you don't know the city that well. I'll make a call. <laughs> okay, make a call. Ah, but before you go, just one thing. At least believe the devil exists. That is all. And there is a set of proof, one which will be shown to you right now. <laughs> okay. Oh. oh, Mikhail Alexandrovich! Would you like me to contact Comrade Musoy? Well, how does he know the name of my building manager? Maybe Ivan's right, a spy. Make the call, make the call. Oh, witch of Warfield! Oh, oh. 47! 
What? What did he say? Who was the PM? The consultant, the man who killed Misha Berlioz. What do you mean killed? I'm sorry, be, be precise. The foreign consultant, a professor, and a spy. What's his name? It's a... Uh... Oh, I didn't make out the name on the card, but it begins with a walk. What last name begins with a walk? We, wait, wobble, 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 No! Fool! What has Walt got to do with it? I'll never remember it this way. Citizen, call the police. Tell them to send five motorcycles with machine guns to catch the consultant. <gasps> and there are two others with them too. A tall one with a, with a, with a tall hat and, and a cat. One big, fat, old black cat. I know he's here. I'll start searching for him. I want you to call a hospital. Comrade Holmes. Yes? Come. <laughs> You're upset. We're all upset about the death of our dear friend, Mikhail Alexandrovich, Misha. We all understand that perfectly well, but you're tired. The comrades here will take you home to bed where you can rest and forget all about this. You! Yes. Don't you understand that we have to catch the professor? What is this nonsense, idiot? Oh, pardon me, comrade homeless. <laughs> no, anybody else, fine. But you, I will not pardon. Hurry <laughs> He's mixed up with some dark powers. And you can't catch him, not easily. And he saw everything. He was there at Pontius Pilate. I could vouch for him. What am I wasting my time on you for? I want a phone call. It's OK. Let him use the phone. I'm going to. Building 302. Oh, okay. 
Um, a great but detailed history of Building 302 of Parkin 50. <laughs>
Nobody knows for sure what Annalisa thought. Only by the next morning, the apartment was completely empty. It fell to Comrade Rousseau, chairman of the Tenants Association, to fill the empty rooms. Now, as you can imagine, there were dozens of inquiries into the empty rooms from other well-populated apartments in the building. It's so crowded, please! please. I mean, I mean please, come on! I'm okay, so please. Please. Somehow, the apartment ended up with only two residents. Hello! Stevie Likudia, director of the Variety Theatre. Stevie? Yup. Comps for any performance for you and yours? Ooh. It would be my honor. Oh, yeah. Oh. Huh. Kale Berlioz, chairman of Maslow, please. Oh. Call me Misha, and a table for two verbiatives any night. Oh, yeah. Hey, Misha. Stevie and Berlioz enjoyed their idyllic residence for a whole month. Until the events of just a few scenes ago. The morning after Berlioz's decapitation, Stevie woke up with a terrible headache. Oh my head! Oh god! Oh, oh no! Misha! Misha! Do we have any aspirin? Give me the variety theater. Rimsky, it's me. I'll be to the theater in 30. Good morning, Stefan Bogdanovich. Can I help you? It's 11. I've been waiting for you to wake up for an hour. <laughs> Our appointment was at 10, you know. Excuse me, tell me your name again, please. And you've forgotten my name. Well, speaking frankly, I did go a little crazy last oh, night. Be silent. Take this. You are Stepan Bogdanovich Likodeyev. Stevie. Stevie. Mm. Director of the Variety Theater. Or have I made a grave mistake? Yes, now I think I remember you. Mm. Last night, I don't remember much from last night. You want me? I don't smack. Oh. You are in a bad state, aren't you? Yes, I am. Please don't tell anyone. I'm very embarrassed. <laughs> of course. <laughs> So you remember to catch up, signing on mm. Professor of Black Magic Wolin for tonight's performance at the Variety Theater. I called the Moscow Regional Entertainment Commission and had it approved. You remember? Um, yes? Allow me to reimburse you? Don't be an idiot! Sorry, sir, so sorry, I didn't mean to... Um, this is delicious, by the way, where the devil's it from, sir? Comrade, I really must apologize for the state of the entire the honest I remember any conversation last night, but if you say so... If I can simply just, may I please see the contract? Oh, please. Please do. <gasps> what? You seem frightened, Stepan Bogdanovich. There is no need. This is my retinue, and we have need of room. But we may not have space for you <laughs> with us. <laughs> and generally speaking, he's not been behaving very well recently. Mm -hmm. Drinking, using his position to get with women, mm -hmm. can't do anything, doesn't do anything, doesn't even know what he's supposed to be doing, pulling the wool over his superior's eyes. Using the government car. <laughs> Honestly, I don't know how he got to be director. He's as much a director as I <laughs> and a bishop. Uh, you don't look much like a bishop to me, Azazello. Exactly. Well, there's only one thing to be done. I agree.
the soy. Excuse me, Ark, are you an unofficial person? Oh, who are official or unofficial persons? <laughs> it's all point of view, no? It fluctuates. Yes, but who are you? Well, what, what's your name? My name? Let's call me Korovia, but no formalities. Would you like a snack? Excuse me, but this is a deceased man's apartment. You're- I'm not allowed to be here, I know, but you see. I am an interpreter for a foreign individual who has taken residence at this apartment. <laughs> Excuse me, uh, this comes as a big surprise to me. I, I must demand an explanation. Oh, I can explain, of course, but first, <laughs> check your briefcase. Whoa! Uh, you see, Mr. Likodeev has kindly invited Mr. Wolin to perform at the Variety Theater and to reside here while Mr. Likodeev vacations to Yalta. <laughs> How could I have forgotten about this? This is a... Oh, all kind of funny things happen, Comrade Basoy. All kinds. <laughs> Absent-mindedness. Fatigue. Blood oh pressure. Oh my goodness. <laughs> I'm terribly absent-minded myself. Someday we'll have a drink and I'll tell you my biography. You'll simply die. <laughs> well, uh, as chairman of the Tenants Association, of this building, I must, I must insist that I meet this foreigner and speak with him in person. Oh, I'm afraid that's quite impossible. You see, he's training the cat. I could show you the cat if you'd wish. Mm -hmm. Uh, no, thank you. <laughs> uh, but where? He certainly can't stay on the deceased half of the apartment, and foreigners are supposed to stay at the Metropole. Oh, uh, first class service for a traveler. Billiards? Yes, people. I know, I know. <laughs> But my clients, Mr. Wolin, he's capricious as the devil. He hates hotels and he needs his space. <laughs> yes, I know. It's all the same to the deceased. Why not let the association charge him for the whole apartment? <laughs> I mean, it's an obvious gain and a profit to you. Mr. Wolin is a millionaire. He won't stint on the money. He's got a villa in Nice. Just wait till you see it. Well, I guess we could consider it, but I would have to get permission from the foreign, from the foreign tourist bureau, yes. It seems they have no objection to the matter. Wonderful, that's wonderful. <laughs> well, considering this, I suppose we could rent apartment number 50 to the artist Wolin for 500 rubles a day. <laughs> so that comes to 3,500 for the week. Yes. Oh, Comrade Basoy, tis, 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 what kind of money is that? <laughs> Make it 5,000, he'll pay it. <laughs> I'll draw up the contracts. Yes, cash loves counting, doesn't it? Your I won't lie. <laughs> wow, I guess this concludes it. <laughs> Um, Wonderful. Uh, um, so Stevie used to get me comp tickets to the theater show? Yes, shows. how many would you like? 12, 15. Oh, no, just two for me. Oh, and my one. <laughs> oh, I, I, couldn't, I couldn't accept that. Accepted, accepted. You'll only offend him if you don't. It's severely punishable. And who's here to witness it? Be reasonable. Oh, all right. <laughs> I to inform you that the head of our tennis association at 302 Sedovia, Comrade Pissoy, has been doing very shady business with <gasps> foreign currency. <laughs> this is Timothy Katzoff speaking. <laughs> yes, I live here, but please don't mention my name. I wouldn't want any retaliation from the chairman. <laughs>
would you please try calling the Gadea again? She's not at home. I sent Karpov. Nobody's at his apartment. Devil knows what's going on. Oh, the Gadea! Oh, the Gadea! Oh, oh. uh, today and every day at the Variety Theater, an additional program for us to hold it. A black magic with full exposure. Good, I like it. It's very loud, very big. But there's a whole line of them around the block. Look at them all. <laughs> I just like this black magic undertaking immensely. Stop, don't be that way, Rimsky. It's, uh, it's subtle. It's all about the exposure at the end. I don't know. I don't know. He's always doing this, springing things on us. You think he could let us meet him? And where the hell did he find this magician? Have you met this Professor Wolin? No, never. And now Stevie is hours late and nowhere to be found. Maybe he fell under a tram car, like barely is. Well, that wouldn't be so terrible. No! Quick and variety. Uh, that's us. No! Super lightning time red signs. Yalta to Moscow Variety Theater. Today, 11.30, brown-haired man arrived, Yalta PD. Nightshirt, trousers, no shoes, mental case claims, Stevie Likadeo, director of Variety. Why are Yalta PD Likadeo location? Well, how do you do about that? More shenanigans. An imposter, Stevie. In Yalta? Ah. Oh. Ah. Telegraph office? Yes, Variety account. Take a super light. Director Stevie Likadeyev is in Moscow. Send someone else to his place. Oh, uh, oh there he is. No! <gasps> what is it? Begging you believe, thrown to Yalta, Woland hypnosis, wire Yalta PD, confirm identity, Stevie Likadeyev.
the police from Ivan Homeless, member of Massillet. Yesterday evening, I went for a walk at Patriarch's Ponds with the deceased M.A. Berlioz. <laughs> no, that's stupid. If he's deceased, can't walk. With the later deceased, who since fell under a tram car. No. Berlioz, who subsequently fell under a tram car. Not the composer. <laughs> Of the tram car, and no, no, no! Pilot! Yes! Pontius Pilot, the, the, the procurator of Judea, wrapped in a cloak of blood red lining, emerged onto the colonnade of Herod's palace. Yes! Why did I get so worked up about Berlioz getting his head cut off in the first place? I mean, Berlioz! I hardly know the man. I mean, he's bald, and he's eloquent. So what? If we really ventilate the question, I'm not his buddy, or his in-law, or anything like that. And why did I go mad over this foreign consultant? Why did I chase him around in my underwear with a candle? Ah, but he knew Berlioz would get his head cut off. What are we talking about here, comrades? Something's up. That's obvious to a child, but... That's the interesting part. You personally knew Pontius Pilate. Isn't that enough for you? Why didn't I ask him about what happened next between Pilate and the prisoner of the notes? So a journal editor gets decapitated. So what? I mean, is the journal going to shut down? What can you really do? Man is mortal. Sometimes suddenly so. So. May he rest in peace, he'll get another editor, maybe even more eloquent. What does that make me? An idiot. <laughs> May I sit? Look, how did you get up here? I thought they locked the balcony grills. Oh, they're locked. But the nurse, while a very dear person, is a little absent-minded, and a month ago, I stole her keys so I can get out on the balcony and occasionally visit a neighbor. If you can get onto the balcony, then you can escape. Is it too high up? No, or? it's not too high up. I just don't have anywhere to escape to. So here we sit. <laughs> here we sit. Yes. You're not violent, I hope. Because I can't stand noise, force, violence, or anything like that. I especially hate shouting, or cries of rage, or suffering, or anything like that. You're not violent. Oh, yesterday in a restaurant, I punched a man in the face. Oh. Well, you should give that up. Mm. Your profession? Poet. Oh, no. And your name? Homeless. You don't like my poetry. I hate your poetry. Wait, which of my poems have you read? None of them. Then how can you say that? I've read other ones. But maybe there's a miracle. I'll take it on faith. Is your poetry good? You tell me. It's terrible. Don't write anymore. <laughs> <laughs> I promise. <I'll> <laughs> oh, it's a nurse. Uh, quick, hide under the bed. All right, much, much better. Would you like to sleep in the dark or leave the light on? Leave it on, please. Very well. Good night, Ivan. Good night. She's gone. This is extraordinary. Patriarch's Pond, board consultant, uh, a professor, Pontius Pilot. What, what a coincidence. Wait, so, so you believe me? I do. Poor Berlioz. Oh, he should have. Wait, do you know this professor of law? Yes, I do. Who is he? You're not going to get upset, are you? You won't call for the doctor? Injections? No, 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 no. Tell me who he is. Very well. At Patriarch's Ponds, you met Satan! But that's impossible. He doesn't exist! For goodness sake, anybody else?
else could say that, but not you. Not now. You must have been one of his first victims. The, the way you've described him here, I knew at once he was at Pilots. He had breakfast with Kant, and now he's in Moscow. But what the hell is he doing here? Shouldn't we try to catch him? Sounds like you already did. How did that go for you? <laughs> I generally don't recommend anybody try. But how annoying it was that it was you who met him and not me. And even though it's all burned up, it's all gone to ash, but I give. Oh, I give these keys for a chance to meet him. Why? What do you need from him? Well, it's a strange story. I'm here for the same reason as you, Pontius Pilate. A year ago, I wrote a novel about him. Oh, you're a writer. I am a master. She sewed it for me herself. But what's your name? I no longer have a name. I have renounced it, as I have everything in life. Will you at least tell me about the novel? Oh, if you wish. My life, I should say, has not been very ordinary. I'm a historian by education. And until two years ago, I worked in one of the Moscow museums and made a little money on the side doing translations. Oh, which languages? English. French, German, Latin, Greek, a little Italian. Oh, my. I lived alone, no family, few acquaintances. And then one day, I won 100,000 rubles from a state bond I got at the museum. I found it in my laundry basket. It had the winning numbers from the newspaper. I bought books. I left my shared flat and rented two rooms in the basement of a small house off the lane by the Arbonne. Quit my job at the museum. I began writing a novel about Pontius Pilate. Oh. It was a golden age, a completely private apartment with a front hall with a sink in it here, uh, two windows just level with the paved walk from the garden there, opposite, four steps away, lilacs, linden, and a maple tree. In winter, I rarely saw black boots walk by crunching the snow. Here was a sofa and another sofa opposite with a table between them with a beautiful night lamp and in the other room, books. <laughs> Books, and here was my stove with a fire in it, it eternally burning, and my novel, Pilot, was flying to the end, and I already knew the last words. And suddenly, it was spring, and through my window I could see lilac bushes, bare at first, slowly dressing themselves in green. And that's when it happened, last spring. Something far more delightful than 100,000 rubles, which you'll admit is a large sum. Oh, huge. I would go for walks or have dinner at this wonderful restaurant, and I had this wonderful suit, and she was carrying these repulsive yellow flowers. The devil knows what they're called, but they're the first to bloom in Moscow for some reason. And they stood out against her black spring coat. Not a nice color. She turned down the lane at Tverskaya and looked back. And there must have been thousands of people walking by, but she saw only me, alone. And she was beautiful. But I was struck by the extraordinary loneliness in her eyes. I followed her, and we walked along together, and there was not a soul in the lane with us. And, and I was suffering. I wanted to speak to her, but I was terrified that I wouldn't say anything, and I would never see her again, and then... Do you like my flowers? No. <laughs> uh, <laughs> do you generally dislike flowers? No, I like flowers, I just don't like these. Which flowers do you like? I like roses. silence for a while until she took them from my hand and threw them in the gutter. And so we walked. Side by side. Love jumped out at us like a murderer leaping from an alley and struck us at the same time. Like lightning like a Finnish knife. Though later she always said we'd loved each other for a long time, we just didn't know each other yet. We were with other people. 
I'm married. So am I. Oh, to who? That uh, uh, Varenka, uh, Manetchka, uh, striped dress, the, uh, the museum. I, I don't remember. It doesn't matter. Oh. oh, and all the day with the flowers, so that at last you would find me. And if it hadn't happened, I would have poisoned myself because my life was empty. Oh, she became my secret wife. She would visit me every afternoon. I would start waiting for her in the mornings. Before I met her, I felt that no one walked through the yard, but suddenly the whole city was flocking there, and I would look for her with every pair of boots that came by the window. My heart would start pounding, and it wouldn't stop until she would come and tap at the glass with her black suede shoe. She would come in, put on an apron, like the kerosene stove, and make lunch. Sometimes we would make potatoes during the spring storm. In the summer, she brought roses. <laughs> and then she started reading my novel. Yeah. It captured her imagination, her attention. Sometimes it even made me jealous. I'm sorry. I can't put it down. I can't. My life is in this novel. You have to finish it. How many pages left? It's, it's a masterpiece. You are a master. <laughs> it's beautiful. You're going to be famous. I finished the manuscript in August, and then came the hour for me to leave my secret refuge and go out into life. That was the beginning of the end for me. Did you like it? Hmm. Yeah. Where are you from again? From here. I'm from Moscow. I've lived here my whole life. And uh, how long have you been writing? Uh, two years. I admit I'm rather new. Well, how come nobody's heard of you? Mm. Well, as I said, it's my first novel. And it, what made you choose such a strange theme? I mean, Jesus and Pontius Pilate, what made you write about that? I'm sorry, are you saying you're interested in publishing it or you're not interested mm, in publishing it? Well, now I can't make that decision on my own. The rest of the editorial board will have to weigh in. Come back in two weeks. So I waited two weeks, and when I came back, I was greeted by this secretary, her eyes crossed from so much lying. Oh, oh I know her. her. That's Lepshinikova, the editorial secretary. Here's this back. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, well, the publisher has material for the next two years, so the question of publishing your novel isn't on the table. <laughs> Immediately after, I don't remember very much. You have to fight them. No. Yes, fight them. Go again, go tomorrow, go tomorrow and the next day, and the next day until they finally relent. Promise me. You'll go tomorrow and you'll insist. I tried. Two days later, the article started. The critics. Armand. An enemy of the state attacks. I wish to warn our fellow citizens that a certain writer has attempted to put into print an apology for Jesus Christ. Lebrovich. It seems that a particular would-be novelist has made an attempt to put into print an absurd and pro-religious fiction that promotes pilotism. Mm. I am strongly against pilotism, and I suggest that we all, as citizens, strike hard against this ideology. Latunsky. <coughs> I'm going to poison him. Joyless autumn came. The rejection of my novel had taken a piece of my soul, and I lived only for our meeting. And it was then that something strange began to happen to me. Anguish, foreboding. The articles didn't stop, but I felt the men writing them weren't saying what they wanted to say. That was the source of their anger. And then fear came. Not of the articles, no, things totally unrelated to them or the novel. I 
I became afraid of the dark. I became afraid to go to sleep. I, I had to sleep with the lights on. I, I felt like there was an octopus sucking on my face and sticking its tentacles down my throat. I, You're not well. There is something wrong with you, I can tell. I know. Please. You should drop everything. Take the rest of your money and go to the south. Go to the Black Sea so you can rest. Promise me. I promise. I'll do it one of these days. How much do you have left? Uh, about 10,000. That should be enough. I'll go. I'll go. I don't want to leave you like this, but I'm expected. I have to go to necessity. But I'll come tomorrow, okay? Okay. I love you. I love you too. I'll see you tomorrow. Wait. Uh, will you? Will you take this? Is this the ten thousand? Yes. Will you take it, please? Why all this way? Why so much? I'm. Afraid of thieves. Will you keep it safe for me just until I go south? All right. It was dusk, mid October. She left. I went to sleep on the sofa. I woke up feeling that the octopus was here. The autumn darkness pressed in against the windows. I, I felt like it would seep in and drown me like ink. It was two o'clock in the morning. I cried out. I wanted to run to someone, anyone, even the neighbor upstairs. I, I wasn't in control of myself. I had strength enough to start a fire in the stove. I, I started drinking. Think of me. Know that I'm in trouble. Come now. Come now. A glass of wine, please. This is our price for living a lie. I don't want to live like this anymore. I'd stay with you tonight and forever, but I don't want that to be the way my husband remembers me. Running away in the middle of the night. He's never done anything wrong to me. tonight he was called to the factory there was a fire but he'll be back tomorrow morning and I'll talk to him then I'll simply tell him that I'm in love with another man and then I'll come to you forever do you want that maybe you don't want that I can't let you do that. Why not? I'm... I'm sick. I'm not well. I, I'm having a mental breakdown. 
freaked out, Margot. Things are not going well for me. And I'm going to die. Is that the only reason? <laughs> yes. <laughs> then I'm dead with you. Don't be afraid. Just make it for a few more hours. I'll be back. That was the last time I ever saw her. A quarter of an hour after she left, there was a knock at the window. January, in the same clothes I had been wearing that October night, I found myself back outside my building. Three months had passed. The door was locked, and there was music coming from inside my window. It was snowing. I uh, disturbed a stray dog as I walked. Maybe I should have jumped in front of a tram car. I was terrified of trams, of everything. As disturbed as that dog, I walked across the city in the dead of night, in the middle of winter, and checked myself in here. you have? A letter from the madhouse? I couldn't do that to her. I couldn't hurt her like that. I'm, I'm not capable of that. I hope she's forgotten me. I'm sure she has. But, but surely, surely you might recover from your fear and your sickness. I and am incurable. I almost froze to death walking here across Moscow. It's a miracle I'm alive. Two of my toes are Anyway, it's not so bad here. I used to want to see the world. It wasn't meant to be. I get this peace, this insignificant life. It's not so bad. Summer is coming. And I have seen it. There will be a full moon tonight. Whoa, it's almost midnight. I should be going. Wait, 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 tell me what, what happened after with Yeshua. Did, did, did Pilate, did he save oh, him? No, did... no, 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 no. I can't talk about my novel. Not anymore. But thank you. Thank you for the conversation. The procurator walked up onto the platform. He squinted but not to avoid the burning sun, no. He simply did not wish to see the prisoners who would be brought onto the platform behind him. The moment the white scarlet-like cloak appeared above the sea of people, a wave of sound crashed onto Pilate's ear. Council. I approve this choice as the Roman authority 
and generous Caesar grants him his lonely life. The name of the prisoner who will be freed before you is... Why don't you let me go, Hegemon? <laughs> Gentlemen, soon tell me these Muscovites, they have changed significantly, have they not? That they have, sire. <laughs> Indeed. They have changed on the outside, as has the city itself, not to mention their clothing and the appearance of these, uh, what are they, uh, trams and automobiles? Buses. Yes, these apparatuses. <laughs> the uh, foreign artist is expressing admiration at the technological advancements of Moscow, as well as its citizens. Ah. Did I express admiration? By no means, sire. You express no admiration. What is this man talking about? He's lying. <laughs> Felicitations on your lie, citizen. Of course, I care nothing for these trams and buses and telephones. I have a much bigger question in mind. These city folk changed on the inside. Ah, that is the most important question of all, sire. <laughs> yes, but here we are chatting away, and I'm sure our audience is beginning to grow bored. Let's show them a trick. Something simple. Hmm. Eins, zwei, drei. <laughs> in connection to alimony payments to citizens Alcova. Oh. Oh. oh, wait a minute, wait a minute. That's an old trick. You're one of them. Oh. No, no, it's true. It's here. <laughs> <laughs> and really, you think so? Well, then you must be one of us too because now the deck is in your pockets. Thank you, oh, comrade. It's true. We can all 
be participants in the fun. <laughs> Eins, zwei, drei! Sometimes careless, sometimes mercy tugs at their heartstrings. This apartment problem has ruined them. <laughs> On with his head. Okay, but what about the exposure? I mean, how are you doing all these tricks? The exposure? <laughs> I guess I'll do one more trick. night, citizen. Uh, My husband was at the Faunus Commission meeting, but what does that have to do with anything? <laughs> oh, madame, you were severely mistaken. When your husband left for the meeting yesterday, which, by the way, was not scheduled, <laughs> he left his cab by the Phonics Commission building and hopped a bus to Ella Hoff Street, where he met up with an actress from a touring company at whose residence he spent nearly four hours. What? <laughs> you setting on Bold Mountain, and the mountain was cordoned off by the Roman cavalry. Only one onlooker remained, hidden amidst the cracks on the north slope. Stupid, idiot, fool, coward! The fourth hour comes to an end. I, Matthew Levi, am here on Bald Mountain, and still no death. The sun has burned the crowds away. No death. And now it sinks into the Mediterranean, and still no death. God! God, why are you angry with him? Just let him die. Why did I let him enter Yerushalayim alone? Why did 
I could spare him more suffering. Yeshua? Yeshua, I saved you. <laughs> I saved you, and I go with you. <coughs> Matthew, your faithful and only disciple. Oh, damn it! Damn it! Tell me of the execution. What exactly interests the procurator? Were there any signs of unrest from the crowd? That's most important, of course. None. Very good. You are certain that death has come? Quite certain. Tell me, were they given the soothing serum before they were hung on the stakes? Yes. But one of them, he refused his. Who? I know the story. bodies of the three executed men and bury them secretly out of sight out of mind yes I do wait just another moment your incredible achievements as the head of the secret police give me the pleasure of reporting your successes to Rome I am only fulfilling my duty to the Emperor <laughs> I want to ask regarding what was his name Judas Icarius I hear he received money for his encounter with that mad philosopher. He will. How much? No one can be sure. Huh? Not even you. No. Oh. Greedy old man from Kyrgyz, who is old, no? The procurator's never wrong, but on this he is mistaken. He is a young man, you see. I see. The thing is, I have received some information Apparently, he was going to be stabbed tonight. Procurator, you do kind of up my ability. I have no such reports. My sources are accidental and uncertain, but I must foresee everything, and I must follow my intuition. It just never fails me. You see, tonight, one of Hanotsu's secret friends, enraged by the betrayal, is going to stab Judas, take the money, and put it on the high priest's doorstep with the note returning the curse. Do you 
imagine the high priest would enjoy such a gift? I imagine it would lead to a great scandal. Oh, I agree. This is why I ask you to use all of your power to guard Judas Iscariot tonight. Your orders will be followed, but I must reassure you that it will be very difficult to fulfill the villain's scheme. To find the man, to stab him, find out how much he received, and return the sum to the high priest all in one night. Tonight. It would be. And yet it shall happen. I almost forgot, today on our way into Yerushalayim, I took some money from you to throw to the poor. A trifle, I'm sure. Even a trifle deserves payment. I await your report on this business. Tonight. Matthew, I made the same mistake as you. Why did I leave him alone that night? I dreamed of him last night for the first time. A bleak landscape, joyless, half-naked trees. He came out of a log cabin in the distance looking like hell. He gestured for me to come. Either he is dead, and he's come to take me with him. Very good. Or he's alive, and he's reminding me of himself. Either way, I believe something is going to happen. There you are, Margarita Nikolaevna. What would you like for the main course tonight? It makes no difference. Are you going out? You'll never believe what people are saying. Yesterday at the theater, there was a conjurer, and he did things in a seance that made all of the audience gasp and gave away two bottles of perfume and a pair of stockings to everybody. And then when it was over, poof, everybody was naked. <laughs> Can you believe it, Natasha? <laughs> You're smart. Do you really believe those stories? People waiting in lines, go making up lies, and then you repeat them. They're not lying. I saw myself. Today, at the grocers on Arbot Street, this woman came into the shop wearing these fancy shoes. Then, just as she was paying at the register, they disappeared, and she was left in nothing but her stockings. And the shoes were the magic shoes she got at the sale. And she left like that. And she left like that. <laughs> And yesterday, Margarita Nikolaevna, the police arrested hundreds of people outside the theater. Women from the seance were running down Verskaya in nothing but their underwear. <laughs> this sounds a lot like one of Daria's stories. I've noticed she's a terrible liar. <gasps> Look, I can conjure two. These are yours. Oh, just promise me you'll put on something else before you run down to a sky. <laughs> we'll see. <laughs> Have a nice walk. Just to find out if he's alive. I wonder who are the buried. Berlioz Mikhail Alexandrovich, chairman of Masolit. They're in a 
weird mood today, wondering what to do about the head. Nobody found it. What pet? Uh, this morning, they had an open casket at River Yellow. The head went missing from the coffin. <laughs> um, How is that possible? Hell if I know! I suppose it wouldn't hurt to ask Behemoth. Such a scandal, and who needs his head anyways? Wait, they're from Mesmet. Is one of them Matunsky, the critic? Yes, right there, the one with the uh, mustache. Ah, I see you hate this Latinsky. Yes, and some others. But it's not important anymore. Sure doesn't sound important, Margarita Nikolaevna. How do you know my name? I don't know you so. Where would you know me from? But in any case, I've been sent to you on a little business. Oh, well, you should have started with that instead of this nonsense about a severed head. What do you want? Do you want to arrest me? No. No! No, no, no. Is this how all of you have conversations? Hi! Hello! How are you? Are you here to arrest me? I simply have business with you. What business? I've been sent to invite you to a visit this evening. What are you raving about? What visit? To a very distinguished foreigner. Oh, you're a pimp. Here's a pimp. Ridiculous. Thanks for that, fool! Asshole. And the darkness from the Mediterranean Sea washed over the city, so hated by the procurator. The hanging bridges from the temple disappeared, and Yerushalayim, the great city, was lost to the world, as if it had never so, why don't you get lost too with your charred notebooks and dried roses? Oh, dream more prophetic dreams to ignore. How did you know that? How do you know that? Were you spying on me? Did you bribe Natasha? Who are you? What institution sent you? This is why. I'm not from an institution. Please sit. <laughs> Up to him. <laughs> I'm sure anybody in the world would dream of that, but I must disappoint you. That won't be happening. And what kind of foreigner is that? <laughs> and what's in it for me? A great deal. And I highly suggest you take this opportunity. And you're hinting that I'll find out about the master when I'm there, right? I'll go. I'll go wherever you want. Oh, humans. The cat, 
He's the charming one. Stop speaking in riddles. Put yourself in my shoes. Disappear a director, make threats on the phone, shoot somebody, that's my thing. Talk to a woman in love, no thank you. Ah. So you'll go? I'll go. Then please accept this. It'll come in handy, Margarita. You've aged a lot from grief in the last half year. Now I'm going to go. Ah. When the clock strikes half past nine, kindly strip down and rub this ointment all over your face and body. Then do what you will, but expect a phone call at 10. Do you understand? I understand. I know I'm being dragged into something dark, but I have no other hope. And if you're going to destroy me, then shame on you, shame on you. <laughs> I'm going to die for love. I'm going to the devil and beyond. Forgive me. And forget me. As soon as you can. I'm leaving you forever. Don't look for me. Sorrows and misfortunes have turned men to a witch. Bye. 
everything. Goodbye, everyone. I'm flying away.
Dovea Street, building 302, apartment 50. Are you ready? I'm ready. No, I'm more amazed at the size of this room. I mean, I know this building. How could you squeeze this into a Moscow apartment? <laughs> it's simple, really. When you're accustomed to the fifth dimension, it's absolutely nothing at all to expand your space to its desired proportions. Devil knows what proportions. I'll say more. I've known individuals with no knowledge of the fifth dimension who've been able to work positive miracles in terms the other day, there was sit the city broker who bought himself a three room apartment in the suburbs. With no supernatural help at all, he divided one room into two with a partition and room, a four room apartment. He traded it for two separate apartments, a three and a two. Five rooms. Well, he was just about to split the three into two twos when I got so excited I couldn't help myself. I had to pay him a visit. Rest assured, he's got himself his own special sort of Oh, but to business is theme, Marina Nikolaevna. You're an intelligent woman. I'm sure by now you've guessed who our host is. Good. We value transparency. So, I'll be honest and cut straight to the point. Once a year, we host the ball. The spring ball of the full moon, or the ball of a hundred kings, as some call it. <coughs> and Monsieur, you understand, is a bachelor, but a ball for a hostess. Not the same, you must agree. And we have a tradition that the hostess must be named Margarita, and must be a local. You'll note we are in hostel. We found 121 margaritas, and none of them were suitable, except for you. So in short, you won't refuse, will you? I won't refuse. Done. Follow me. And do not be afraid. I'll be bold in advising you to never be afraid of anything. The ball tonight will be magnificent. And it'll be filled with many people who are great in their day, but compared to the one that I serve, their power is laughable. And you must not forget, you are royal blood yourself. <laughs> royal blood? Oh! Oh, my queen. Questions of blood are very, very complicated. Were we to question certain great-great-grandmothers, who knows what family secrets we would uncover? Yes, very complicated, like a shuffle deck of cards. But if I were to leave a hint, I'd say France, 16th century. One of those queens would be very, very surprised to see me leading their lovely great, great, great granddaughter to Moscow's greatest ballrooms. But here we are.
the domestic attire. <laughs> Get up. The match is canceled. The queen is arrived. Oh, By no means. <laughs> By no means. Monsieur. Monsieur, I'm certain that Chess Weekly would pay good money to be allowed to print it. Well, if you are going to be so disarmingly courteous, then uh, not that I expect anything less. We'll keep it casual. <laughs> Well, then we're going to continue with the circus under the bed. Get up, damned hands. The match is on! I can't find my knight. He's rode off somewhere. All I see is a toad. Do you think you're in the village square? Save these antics for the variety theater! <laughs> Show yourself and we'll declare a forfeit. <gasps> no way, monsieur! What is this? Why are you wearing a bow tie if you're not even wearing any pants? <laughs> Cats don't wear pants, monsieur. Would you like me to put on boots too? That's only in fairy tales. But I've never seen someone attend a ball with no tie. I'm not going to risk putting myself in a comical position just to be thrown out by the neck. Oh, all right, all right. It's your move. You're in check. Anytime he is losing, he starts yammering. <laughs> uh, allow me to introduce my maid, Hella, and the buffoon is Behemoth. You've already met Korovyev and Azazel. It is a simple retinue. A dire position, dear behemoth. <laughs> dire, but not hopeless. <laughs> well, your king is in check. My king? <laughs> yes, on G2. Oh, monsieur, I'm mortified, but there is no peace on that square. In fact, there is no king on the board, so how could I be in check? Do you resign? Uh, let me think. I make a delicious cat soup. Yes, I do resign. But only because I cannot play in an environment of envious persons. Hello. Stop. Pain in my knee, and now this ball. <laughs> Allow me. They assure me it's rheumatism, but uh, personally, I think it's a little memento from a rather charming witch I met in 1571. Devil's Conference on Mount Brock. <laughs> Does it hurt a great deal? Oh, it should be fine in another 300 years or so. Oh, by the way, do you have anything that ails you? Any great anguish that poisons your soul? The Tosca, as you Russians say? No, monsieur. Nothing like that. And now that I'm here as your guest, I feel quite content. So you are interested in my globe? I have never seen anything like it. <laughs> it is a cute knick-knack. You know, to tell you the truth, I don't like to listen to the news on the radio. They never pronounce the names correctly. Mm. My globe is much more convenient, especially because I must see all events precisely. There. Do you see the country washed on the side by the ocean? with fire. A war has started there. speak to you, the more I'm convinced you're very smart. Don't worry. He is uh, remarkably equitable, and as a result, he supports both sides equally. And... Monsieur, allow me to inform you we have two outsiders. A beautiful woman who is crying and begging us to leave her with a mistress, and pardon me, a hog. It's Natasha. Natasha. Well, let her stay with her mistress, and... Uh, Send the hog to the cooks. To slaughter him, monsieur? I I'm sorry, it's a misunderstanding. She just uh, took an Excuse me, who said anything about slaughtering him? Mm. The hog will spend the evening with the cooks. I'm sure you'll agree I can't have a hog in the board. Monsieur, midnight approaches. Ah. I will thank you in advance. Don't get lost. Don't be afraid of anything. <laughs> it's time.
find a piece of advice in the book. There will be a variety at the ball, but no one must be given priority. If you do not like someone, you will not show it on your face. Unthinkable. You must love each and every one of them, my queen. For this, the hostess will be rewarded a hundredfold. You must notice them all, at least the smile, at least the nod, anything but indifference. It withers them. Monsieur Jacques, most interesting man, dedicated traitor, counterfeiter, and a most impressive alchemist, famous for poisoning the king's lover. Delighted! Count Robert Dudley, the exact opposite situation. This one was the queen's lover and poisoned his own wife. The queen is delighted! Signora Tofana, extremely popular among young Neap Neapolitans and Falerians, especially those who grew sick of their husbands. You must admit, sometimes one does grow sick of a husband. It happens. <laughs> well, Signora was sympathetic to their cause. She sells them a vial of clear liquid, a couple of drops in the husband's soup, and the next day the young Neapolitan is as free as the spring wind. <laughs> Although her jeweler, jailers got a bit hasty when they found out about the 500 husbands. <laughs> I'm overjoyed, Queen of Darkness, to have this honor! My pleasure. <laughs> oh, this one is a bit boring. <laughs> she loves balls, but she's always complaining about her handkerchief. What handkerchief? She has a handmaiden assigned to her who places a handkerchief on her nightstand. She's tried to bury it, she's tried to drown it in the sea, but each morning she awakens and there it is. Why? Well, she worked in a cafe and somehow the owner of the cafe got her down into the cellar and nine months later, <laughs> there was a baby boy. She took the baby into the woods, stuffed the handkerchief in its mouth and buried it. She later told the courts that she could not afford to feed the baby. And where is the owner of the cafe? My queen, but allow me to ask, but what does the owner have to do with anything? He didn't strangle any babies in the woods. If you're gonna interrupt my conversation one more time, you whiskered bastard. My queen, I was merely playing devil's advocate. My nose! I'll be quiet. Think of me as a fish. Ah. I'm overjoyed, Queen Hostess, to be invited to the Great Ball of the Full Moon. And I'm pleased to see you. Very pleased. Tell me, do you like champagne? What are you doing, my queen? You'll cause a traffic jam. I do. Frida. Frida. Frida, my name is Frida, my queen. Drink yourself drunk tonight, Frida. And don't think about anything. It will be OK, I promise. The Marquise poisoned her father, two brothers, and two sisters for the inheritance. Emperor Rudolph, sorcerer and alchemist. Oh, the queen is 
delighted. Oh, she owned a lovely brothel down in Strasbourg, the Walburgers Revelers. Hey, it's one of the fellas from the stairwell finally made it in. Is he dead too? Almost.
Ukrainians. I was unable to say to Judith Kukira, this was left at the high priest's house, just like you said, 30 pieces. Do you put me on trial or demand my resignation? That will not be necessary. I'm certain you did everything you could. The burial? Completed. There was a man there who refused to come up to his side until he buried the body. Matthew Levi? What did you do with him? He was here. Ukrainians, your resignation would be a crime. Let him in. What is wrong with you? I'm tired. Sit down. I'm dirty. We'll bring you a meal. I'm not hungry. Oh, I lie. Fine. I called you here because I want to see the papers you carry with the words of Yeshua. You want to take everything from me. I didn't say take. I want to see. You killed him. I know I will not be able to spill your blood, Hedgeman, but I want you to know blood will flow. Okay. I will put a knife into the Judas Akiria. Don't worry yourself, tax collector. Judas was stabbed tonight. Who did it? Don't be jealous. I'm afraid he had other fans besides you. Who did it? It was done by me. Rest Matthew. Think of anything else he said, and tomorrow I'll bring you fresh parchment. Monsieur. Nevertheless, oblige. Here. Vodka? My queen, I would never pour vodka for a lady. It's pure alcohol. She was such a marvelous hostess tonight. Such tact, such grace. <laughs> it's getting late. I should be going. Where are you off to in such a hurry? Back home? Never. I'd sooner go back to the river and drown myself. What a reward. Thank you. Kind host, asking myself? No, I won't do it. A midnight swim. Thank you. <laughs> well, good night. Sit. Any parting words? No, monsieur, except that I'm ready for anything else you might require. I'm not at all tired from the ball. And if you'd like it to continue, I'll happily provide money for the lips of thousands more hanged men and murderers. <laughs> Good. Yes, excellent. Right on! <laughs> Never ask for anything, especially, especially from people with more power than you. Let them offer. Let them give. And now listen, because I am asking you. What do you wish for your reward? I wish. Frida, 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 Frida. I can ask for one thing. Demand, Dona Mia, demand one thing. I wish for them to stop giving Frida the handkerchief she used to strangle her child. Oh, mercy! Ugh. Stuff that cracks and still it seeps in. Exactly. Quiet! I suppose you're an especially good person with a high moral character. No. Frankly, I'm frivolous. I ask on Frida's behalf only because I was careless enough to give her hope. She's waiting. She believes in my power. If she's disappointed, I'll never have peace. That's it. I see. So you'll grant it? Oh, by no means. <laughs> <laughs> I'm afraid there's been a bit of a misunderstanding. You see, Every department has its own business, and while our power is great, greater than some might suspect. Far greater. Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> it would make no sense for me to do the work of other departments, but you could do it. And it will work. Frida. 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 Frida! Frida! You are forgiven. 
They won't give you the handkerchief again. you be more sensible this time or else fortune might slip through your fingers. I want my lover, the master, to be returned to me right now, this second! <laughs> you, you. <laughs> don't, don't cry, Margo, don't, don't torture me, I'm, I'm sick. I, I'm scared. Margo, I'm hallucinating again. I... Don't be afraid. I'm here. I'm here. Drink this. They did a number on him. <laughs> oh. Okay. Oh. Who are you? Me. I'm, I'm nobody. <laughs> Where did you just come from? A house of sorrow. I'm mentally sick. He's a master. You have to know that cure him. Oh, he's cured, I can assure you. Do you know who I am? Yes, my, my neighbor was Ivan Homeless. <laughs> oh, yes. <laughs> he tried to prove to me that I don't exist. But you believe in me, don't you? I have no choice. Although it would be easier to consider you a hallucination. Sorry. Well, if it's easier, by all means. He's real. We believe you. I mean, this one over here might be a hallucination. With a face like that, it's just a, ah, oh, sword. <laughs> Tell me, why does Margarita call you master? It's nothing, really. She has too high an opinion of my work, that's all. I, I wrote a novel. Ah. And what is this novel about? It's about Pontius Pilate. <laughs> Wait, what? <laughs> <laughs> Pilate? <laughs> Can I read it? Uh, unfortunately, I cannot give it to you. I burned it in the stove. Uh, unfortunately, I don't believe you, Behemoth. <laughs> <laughs> how, how is this possible? Manuscripts don't burn. It's here. The manuscript is here. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Oh. Ooh, they read your novel. They only had one complaint. It's not finished. Would you like to meet your hero? been on that pedestal for 2,000 years. The full moon wakes him. Wakes his dog, too. If cowardice is the worst sin, that dog was never guilty of it. But we must share the fate of those we love. We didn't finish our conversation. 12,000 moons because of the events of a few nights. Isn't that a bit much? Let him go. Another Frida? The person he most wishes to meet is already here. Do you want to finish your novel? One line. Free. You're free. He's waiting for you. Do I follow him? No. <laughs> then, do we come with you? They tell me that you did not earn the light. But, you do deserve peace. If you accept my help, you will be together forever. I only do this sort of thing once a year, so think about it. <laughs> Margo, I'm... I'm scared. Do you really want this? I want to be in our basement apartment. I want to look out the little windows and see the feet going by. Mm -hmm. I want to make potatoes in the stove with a warm fire eternally burning. I will be visited by people we like. People who interest us and never trouble us. Mm. And they'll play for us and sing for us. 
this will be bright. Oh, burn. Hold the candles. And you'll sleep. You'll sleep. And you won't have nightmares. I want to bring you ugly yellow flowers. I want to see the lilac bushes bloom. I want to have the roses. The roses. Please. Please. Yes. 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 Um, can we make one stop before we go? I'm ready. Groovy. Eins, zwei, drei. Authorities are investigating a series of disturbances and disappearances in Moscow over the past few days. The suspects are believed to be a team of highly trained hypnotists and ventriloquists. All citizens are encouraged to apprehend black cats on sight. Uh, it's you. I've been waiting for you, neighbor. I'm here, but I'm not your neighbor anymore. I'm flying away. I've come to say goodbye. I knew it. You met him? I did. Well, I I'm glad you came. I, I kept my word. I'm not going to write poems anymore. Uh, I want to write something else. I've understood a lot. That's good. That's good. Maybe, maybe you'll write the sequel. <laughs> oh, it's time for me to go. Wait. Did you find her? Did she still love you? Here she is. Poor troubled man. You're beautiful. I'm so happy that things worked out for you. Not for me. Although maybe for me too. For you too. Everything is going to work out. I promise. Goodbye, disciple. tell you, nurse, that another person passed away somewhere in the city tonight. A woman. You can turn the light off. Thank you. What's gonna happen to them? They'll spend the afterlife and then eternity together exactly where they wanted to be. But my goodness, that was sentimental. <laughs> it's only once a year, sir. Yes, well, I suppose our business is concluded. Can we go to Rome next year? <laughs> I like Rome better. We'll see. We'll see. Although I have to admit, I always have a good time when we come to Moscow. Oh well, that's it. Let's go. Till next time.
believe that theater is for everyone, and we ticket all of our events on a sliding scale basis with a pay what you can option, so there's never a financial barrier between audiences and arts. To maintain that mission, we of course need a little bit of help. On your way out, you'll see our donation station. There we accept cash, check, card, or Venmo. And we are excited to announce that we are now a 501c3 nonprofit, so your donations will be tax deductible on all those platforms. Um, and I do just want to let you know, because I see the looks of worry in some of your faces, that no donation is too large for us to accept today. <laughs> <laughs> we also have a season subscription program, so if you like what you saw and would like to join the ranks of Dust and City fans, our subscribers, you can visit the donation station and talk to them about purchasing a subscription. All of our subscribers get reserved seats at every performance and invitations to receptions and, <laughs> and um, a surprise gift at every show. Ooh. And like everything else in that day, it is also sliding scale with a pay what you can option. And if you're curious to learn more about what we have coming up, uh, which is a lot, you can follow us at Dodger Theater on Facebook, Instagram, or Twitter. Uh, we have our big gala coming up on June 8th at the gorgeous Ford Left Mansion, and you're all invited. Um, however, word of mouth is always the best form of PR, and if you enjoyed the show, please do tell your friends, and if you hated it, please tell your enemies, mm -hmm. and you can send them straight to the devil. Mm -hmm. um, we've got, this is our last weekend, um, we are fully sold out, but you can always try your luck on the wait list. Thank you, and good night!